So what's up, people, and welcome to another episode of Comics, Animations, and Movies. So this is yet another Alita Battle Angel movie discussion. And just like in my previous episodes, I mentioned that I was going to make one more video with regards to the review of the movie, but this time focused on the future of where the movie may go based upon the scenes that we saw in this movie and how they compare to the source material. Now after thinking about this for a little while, I realized that there was going to be quite a bit of stuff that we needed to discuss. So instead of calling this a review now, I decided to call this a series of videos uh, that are going to be talking about the potential future of where this movie franchise may go. And so yeah, I'm, I apologize for the change in the title and the change in the format, but I wanted to continue on with these discussions because I was very curious about uh, how everybody felt where this movie may go based upon the source material, based upon the current movie, and some of the implications that it mentioned in that movie. So as you can imagine, since we will be talking about uh, potential storylines that may come out based upon the source material, this will be a spoiler-rich um, uh, discussion series. Uh, however, I do want to start out with some few information that I've uh, seen in the grapevine that are not uh, movie spoilers, but are still indicative of where this movie or its potential sequels may go. So, first off, with regards to the recent uh, reviews of this movie, as you can see from the most recent postings of um, Rotten Tomatoes, which is the February 24th, uh, 2019 posting, uh, we still have a discrepancy between the critics and the audience. The critics are still giving it a relatively low score of 60%, and the audience is, interestingly enough, giving it a very encouraging score of 94%. Now, I fall into the audience side. I really enjoyed the movie, and so I'm really glad that the majority of the people who are actually going to see the movie or seeing the movie uh, find it to be quite good. Now, what's interesting is this 60%, which is relatively low compared to the audience, is actually an improvement from the score that the critics were giving when the movie first came out. When it first came out, the critics were giving it a 39% on the freshness meter. Which is quite surprising, especially considering that this is a James Cameron movie. And of course, that the audience is uh, giving it such a high approval. I mean, 39% is very low. It may not be as low as something like Fantastic Four or Fan Four Stick, as they often called it. But yeah, it's getting to that range. And to be compared to movies of that caliber, I thought that that was, to my uh, you know opinion, kind of like a crime, you know, to give it that bad a score. And so I'm glad that the audience score has uh, come out so high. And what's interesting is after the audience scores have uh, started coming out and was found to be so high. The uh, follow-on critics gave it a much higher review. They're still not super high yet. It all of course gets averaged by many of the earlier really bad scores that every critic, most every critic was giving. You know, uh, however, I think uh, the critics started looking at the audience scores and realizing that maybe they were their you know opinion of the movie was not in line with what the majority of the people were thinking. And so maybe it got swayed, I don't know. But in any, any case, this seems to be yet another movie where the critic scores seem to be very different from what the audience has uh, scored the movie. Now, of course, many of us are wondering whether this movie will get a sequel or not. And much of that will depend upon the box office scores, you know, how much money this uh, movie will bring in. And what was interesting is, and this was something very curious for me as well, uh, when the uh, long weekend uh, box office score started uh, accumulating, or right around that time, many uh, movie critics again came out and said, yes, 
you can actually see just how bad this movie is just because it's tanking in the box office. It's doing really, really bad. There was a few articles like that that were coming out. What was curious about that for me was, you know, it was starting to come out already around um, Friday. I'm thinking, why are they giving already a judgment on the box office uh, scores uh, from the weekend? On a Friday, I know it was a long weekend and people were uh, looking at it over the four-day weekend. But I would have uh, uh, expected that the critics would at least wait for the entire weekend to be complete before giving an assessment. I would think that that would be the most professional thing to do. But I was noticing that even right from the beginning, people were like, yeah, you can see that this is going to be a bad movie. This is going to be a flop you know, this is uh, James Cameron's uh, embarrassment sort of uh, statement. And I was like, why are you so adamant in uh, wanting to pan this movie? Anyway, that was a curiosity. It was more It's more a question than a statement. And I, f I found it to be more curious than anything else. So, any case, yeah. I mean, one of the uh, issues with regards to this movie is, aside from, you know, how many people will come uh, view it, is the fact that it does have a high bar to reach because of the fact that it had about, it supposedly cost about $170 million to make. Although, I'm not exactly sure if that's really a true number. I don't know where people got that number from. I mean, there were, it's all over the, uh, you know, the um, press, but I'm not sure if on uh, 20th Century Fox actually gave an official cost number out. And from the discussions that people have been having with regards to how much revenue uh, this movie would have to bring in, you know, there has been a large, ver uh, you know, range of comments that have come out. I've heard uh, amounts such as $350 million, and the amounts as high as five hundred million. Now, of course, the ones that were panning the movie were saying that it had to bring in at least five hundred million before the uh, studio would even consider uh, making a sequel. And I thought that that was again very cu curious because I'm not exactly sure what the executives as a studio decide as the uh, important points for when they decide to make a sequel or not. For example, you know, when you see a discrepancy between the uh, critic scores of 60% or even earlier of 39% versus the audience score of 94%, do they look at the critic score or do they look at the audience score? For example, if you see that the audience score is 94% and you see that there is a uh, you know, you hope that there is a long leg to this uh, movie so that even if it didn't have an initial, you know, opening day box office extravaganza, that it would at least uh, linger on for a long enough time that people would uh, continue to go see the movie out of curiosity and word of mouth. And it would actually bring in uh, revenue over the long run. Some, something similar to what you saw in something like Venom or something like that. Which also got a very low mark from the critics. And eventually, you know, showed that to the critics that that was not the case. You know, and so I'm hoping that that may be the case. I'm hoping that, you know, if you see a high uh, mark from the audience score, if you see that it may be actually doing well, you know, over the long run or doing okay over the long run, then, uh, you know, 20th Century Fox may actually take a risk and say that, you know, maybe it's not doing well right now because it's not a well-known franchise. But considering the fact that the audience loves it so much that we could see a future promise to this uh, movie series and they will green light it, especially if it's backed by somebody as powerful as James Cameron. At least that's my uh, hope, you know, because, of course, I'm trying to be optimistic with regards to all of this. Now, according to Box Office Mojo, uh, the most recent update to the worldwide sale of this movie is about $263 million. So that's pretty good, uh, considering that it's only been out for two weeks, at least in the domestic market. It's been out longer in uh, some of the other markets, but uh, it's been uh, only out for two weeks in the domestic market. 
And so far, the domestic market has only brought in about $60 million, which isn't bad. You know, it's about a 50% drop from the long weekend. But uh, so far, it's, I guess, brought in about $12 million for this weekend. So far, I don't know if it includes Sunday. I don't think it includes Sunday because Sunday isn't over yet. Uh, but that's not too bad. Uh, what's interesting is that it's brought in close to $200 million from the global market. And one of the key indicators that was found this weekend was China. The China market only opened this weekend because it was uh, released in February 22nd. And it's already brought in something like 62 to $63 million out of the two-day uh, release in China. So within uh, you know two days, China has done more uh, for this movie than the domestic box office, at least in terms of revenue. I know the uh, percentages that the studio receives are different depending upon whether you get it from a you know domestic market or from China, you know international market. But it is kind of interesting, and it's kind of unfortunate to see that, uh, considering you know James Cameron is one of the best uh, Hollywood directors slash producers of this era and how well the audience is receiving this movie that the uh, foreign countries actually supporting a uh, homeboy better than the domestic market I mean that's kind of unfortunate to see yeah but in any case I am grateful that China is putting this much out uh, and considering the fact that the wandering earth their mega uh, science fiction movie is still out you know it's still heartening to see that a lot of the audience is actually going to see Alita Battle Angel now it is true that the Wandering Earth has been out for quite a while now in that uh, you know country and so maybe a lot of the audience is now looking for something new to watch and so maybe that's what gave Alita Battle Angel the chance to bring in such good numbers but in any case it's really heartening to see in fact what I've heard is that the producers of the Wandering Earth actually gave uh, really favorable uh, opinions with regards to Alita Battle Angel and so when you get that sort of uh, clout you know the uh, local producers actually giving a thumbs up to the movie then that's also something that's uh, very heartening to see so maybe over the next few uh, you know weeks uh, China will actually bring in much much larger numbers than the domestic box office so I think uh, we have the opportunity to remain hopeful uh, with regards to the possibilities of getting a sequel for this movie due to the global market and I want to remain hopeful because I do want to see a sequel for this movie and in any case um, before I actually uh, dive in uh, there's one more thing I just wanted to show um, this is the poster that I guess was released during the release of the movie in China I just wanted to show it here because it's an absolutely gorgeous image and it depicts as you can see from the clouds the wings that are coming out uh, from Elita I thought that this was absolutely beautiful so yeah I just wanted to show it to you guys here I think uh, there's some nice serious support uh, for this movie and that's really heartening to see now before I dive in since this is part one I just want to go over some of the basics of how you know I will be covering some of the things in more detail you know some of the topics that I found were interesting you know some of it was hopeful some of it was concerning but uh, many of it was implying uh, things that were going to be coming up in the future uh, I do want to keep it relatively basic for this part and go over the details much more in the future parts however even in this part I will be covering stuff that came out in the source material storyline uh, that are beyond what we saw in the movie so if you saw uh, Bat Alita Battle Angel in the theaters and if you're hopeful for the sequel but you don't want to be spoiled with what may come out in the sequel then I am going to give my default uh, you know uh, spoiler alert at this point I may be talking about things that may come out 
in the future storyline and you may not want to hear it. So if you don't want to hear it, please turn off the video at this point. Also, my second uh, default uh, uh, statement is that since this is uh, some speculation discussions that we will be talking about based upon the source material, we are not sure whether the producers will be following the source material in the future. You know, there may be, uh, you know, errors. Uh, the discussions that we may not have, uh, we may have, may not be accurate to what eventually will come out. So even if there's some discussions, even if there's some conclusions that may come out in not only the video, but in the comments below, then yeah, please take it with a grain of salt because it may not actually be indicative of all the things that come out in the movie. Okay, so from the movie and how faithful it was to the actual storyline of the source material, uh, we're starting to get some feeling that we could feel you know, confident to trust uh, James Cameron and Robert Rodriguez to remain faithful in the future movies. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, there are many ways that I feel the movie may actually go. And I want to talk about a couple of them here uh, in this part. So one is, of course, that it remains basically faithful to the entire uh, Battle Angel Alita storyline. And if that's the case, then my prediction for the next movie is that it's Motorball. And it makes sense because of the fact that this movie actually gave a really good introduction to Motorball. And one of the great things about this movie is we found out from the audience reaction that they, you know, the audience absolutely loves Motorball. So if the next movie doesn't have it, then that might be a downer. And in fact, if the next movie spent 100% of its time in the Motorball arc, which is a very long arc from the source material, then I don't think people will be too upset considering just how phenomenal the action was in the motorball sequence. And we know that, of course, in uh, the first movie, the players that came out to fight against Elita were terrible. They were the worst of the worst. Even Vector told them they were garbage. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he, she hasn't come up to the big leagues yet. And the movie ended where she was starting to come up in the big leagues. So I could imagine that the second movie may be Motorball. And if that's the case, that's pretty heartening for me because originally I wasn't, when I first started reading the manga, I wasn't particularly a fan of Motorball. It almost felt like a completely different story than the rest of the Battle Angel Alita storyline. However, as I kept on reading it, I started uh, finding extreme value to how the story uh, helps Alita grow. I don't want to go over it here since it, it'll take a long time to discuss. And I want to do it in a different part, a follow-up part uh, of the series. Um, but I think that if they continue with Motorball, it, it might be pretty good because of the fact that, of course, uh, the audience has already shown that they approve of the Motorball world. Uh, this movie has already introduced that, so it will be a good segue from this movie to the next movie. And there are some interesting things I think the, this movie has left, such as the prize of being able to go up to Zalem. That will be a really good way to create the storyline for the next movie, if the next movie is going to be Motorball. However, uh, there may be another possibility. And the other possibility is that from this point on, the uh, story will follow a slightly different path. It may not be completely different, but it may not be exactly faithful to the storyline. And that's because there has been rumors that uh, the producers are going to make this into a trilogy. And the question I can't figure out is if they make this into a trilogy and they remain faithful, then the problem with that is, is that, okay, let's say the second movie is the Motorball arc, and the third movie, which now that uh, we are in the spoiler section, I hope nobody who hasn't read the comic is here, the third movie is, of course, the Zap Zapan arc, right? And the Zapan arc is just... <laughs> just... I mean, it's, it's the one I really want to see. Even though I would like to see Motorball, I really want to see uh, the Zapan arc up in the big screen. Because that thing, that story is amazing. But the problem with that story is it ends in a really, really dark situation. And I'm not sure if people want a trilogy where the ending of the trilogy is seriously dark. 
right? So if they remain faithful to that, then uh, this uh, Battle Angel Alita chronology, the comic chronology, may not fit a trilogy structure, in which case then they will have to start picking and choosing which arcs they want to show. Now, the other information that James Cameron just happened to mention in one of these interviews, and I'm not sure if he was just saying it off the top of his head or if he actually meant it. Uh, he was saying that, you know, the title of the movies will change as they go along. And so I'm not sure if he just created it out of the blue. He said the second movie, for example, could be Alita Fallen Angel, and the third movie can be Alita Avenging Angel. You know, but if it turns out that that is the case, then Alita Fallen Angel indicates that maybe the second movie is the Zapan arc. Or at least a good amount of it is the Zapan arc with Motorball thrown in. I don't think you can completely get rid of Motorball even if you start with the Zapan arc because it ended with Alita going off to Motorball. It would be really strange if, you know, after uh, the first movie is done and you go to the second movie, you find out that she's no longer in Motorball anymore. It's like, why did you even have that sort of ending in the first place then, you know? Maybe they'll just say, hey, she won, but then she will be able to go up to Zalem, which doesn't make sense either. Or maybe that's a hoax. Maybe that's just as much a hoax as, you know, Hugo being able to go up to Zalem as Vector told him. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how the uh, producers will be changing this. But of course, uh, if the second uh, episode or the second movie is the uh, Zapan arc, then you still would, I would think, have to have Motorball. So how that will be placed in, I'll again talk about in a uh, separate part. But now let's talk about the Zapan arc. Yeah, I mean, that will be interesting if that's the second movie, because that is a very, very good movie. I mean, story. It's one of my favorite arcs of the entire original series. It is such a unique story and it's told in such a wonderful way. But there are things with regards to this movie that I thought that uh, may not fit the original storyline well. First of all, uh, Zapan didn't end the way uh, you expected him to end in the uh, storyline. If you recall, the beginning of the Zapan arc starts with him actually being somewhat redeemed, right? Which is a very uh, unusual situation considering the first uh, story, the first movie, Alita Battle Angel, didn't show a soft side of Zapan. The comic did. If you recall, when uh, Alita entered the bar, she, he, she wasn't with Hugo in the comic. She was with um, uh, Nova, uh, not Nova, uh, Ido, right? And uh, Zapan was one of those good old boys who actually greeted Ido and said, Hey, how's it going? And it's only when Alita started grandstanding that uh, Zapan started getting seriously upset. And that caused that major problem. So you actually saw a light side of Zapan in the first uh, part of the comic, which you don't see in the movie. So if people see that first part, people may go, Huh, why is he such a redeemed character when he was such a jerk throughout the entire first movie. That's one. And then the second one is he needed to have trauma at the end of the first movie. He needs to have an outrageous amount of trauma at the end of the first movie because we know how the Zapan arc starts, right? Once he sees Alita on the big screen in Motorball, you know what happens. And that can only happen if he had a severe amount of trauma from what Alita did. I mean, Alita did rip his face off as he, she did in the uh, comic. But the way he ended, it was like, hey, you took my face off. You took my face off. And he was angry. But there was no amount of trauma, shock, and pain that was necessary to create the uh, beginning of the Zapan arc. So I'm not sure how they're actually going to move forward with this. And I hope that they do have that because that is really crucial to the Zapan arc. You need to have the soft side because of the fact that this isn't about a bad guy going after Alita. This is about a person who could have been a good person, but the situation just twisted it around and it, he became somewhat a victim of fate, right? I mean, not only was he uh, 
not able to redeem himself due to the situations around him, but be, he was basically a victim of Nova and all of his diabolical schemes and somewhat his mistake as well because uh, the whole experiment went out of control. But uh, yeah, I mean, he to some extent didn't even want that situation to happen to him at the latter part of his Japan arc. So yeah, how that's supposed to happen when he is a big jerk is yeah i don't know how that will go but uh yeah i would like to hear how you feel about it but i would expect that uh, in general anyway we're gonna keep it uh in a high level for this part and we'll go into more detail later on uh, but uh yeah i would think that it would be one of those two the motorball arc if they stay faithful to the comic storyline and the zapan arc if they want to shorten it and they want to have something that can be indicative of the title Elite of Fallen Angel. Now, the one last thing, which is the uh, really concerning thing, I'll only mention it here, and we'll go into the detailed discussions later. You could, yeah, of course, post comments all you want, and I would appreciate it because that might give, uh, you know, uh, substance to my discussion when I go into this, is Nova. I seriously... I'm concerned with how they're depicting Nova. And let me put it to you one way. I mean, yeah, up in Zalem is just a problem by itself. But the way they showed it is he's the big bad in Zalem. He is the ruler of Zalem. And that just destroys the entire world building. The whole point of Elite Battle Angel is there really never is any real single bad guy, right? And that's one of the reasons why we I really like this story because of the fact that it kind of relates to this world, right? There is not one single bad person that you could defeat in this world that will make everything now peaceful everywhere, right? It's not. There's multiple different factions of multiple different countries and multiple different governments, each of them doing whatever their own agenda is. And there's layers upon layers upon layers. Sure, there's always going to be some situations, such as even World War II, for example, where you could go after one side versus another. But even after that, let's say even after World War II ended, the Cold War immediately began and it all started all over again. So... That's the kind of thing that I really liked about uh, Alita Battle Angel, or not Alita Battle Angel, I'm sorry, Battle Angel Alita, is that there was never really any single one antagonist in this entire thing. The whole world building was the world itself was to some extent quite an oppressive and corruptive world. And that differentiates this story from stories such as Hunger Games or, you know, Divergent, where there is some big bad. You know, maybe it's not one person, but one organization. If you kind of overthrow it, then all of a sudden you are the chosen one that was able to do it. And that shows that just how much of a hero, hero, superhero, elite superhero that she is. Which is not what I want in this story, right? I mean, the whole point of Alita is this is a life uh, experience, a journey story. This is closer to something like the Odyssey, Homer's Odyssey, or Gulliver's Travels. You know, where she goes and experiences different experiences that go on. And of course, a lot of it is dark because there is corruption everywhere. But it's not about one single person. And here they show it as one single person. And I hope that's not the case. I'm hoping that to some extent maybe James Cameron and Robert Rodriguez are trolling us. And maybe uh, Nova is the Nova that we'll see. You know, because one of the things... I'll keep it simple here and then we could discuss it later. When I think of Nova, I do not think of a dictator. When I think of Nova, I think of an anarchist, right? He doesn't create empires. He burns empires down. And that's the difference that I saw between what the Nova that I saw in the comics versus the Nova that I see in the movie. And that seriously worries me because if they go that direction, and if they call him the ruler of Zalem, then the Alita Battle Angel may become yet another Hunger Games slash Divergence slash the typical dystopian future city that you often see, which will then make the critics justified in saying, yeah, we've seen it, done that. This is nothing new, right? The Zapan arc is a good example of just how unique this story is. 
And maybe a lot of people will be extremely angry when they see the Japan arc, the same way a lot of Game of Thrones fans were extremely angry when they saw the Red Wedding. But that's the type of uniqueness that really differentiates the story from a lot of the typical superhero going up against a dystopian future society sort of、uh, stories that you often see. And so I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just going to leave it here as a question to you people rather than to have any other comments. And I would like to hear from you. Uh, how you feel about the situation. Maybe I'm just being too paranoid and maybe Nova's fine. Maybe Nova's okay. You know? So I wasn't particularly upset at how it ended, that, oh, it ended with a sequel sort of thing and unended. It, it was pretty strange. And the way why I think it's pretty strange is if you talk about、um, uh, movie series, let's take Star Wars. The Most acclaimed, now the most critically acclaimed episode of Star Wars is arguably The Empire Strikes Back. People say that was the best of the、uh, entire trilogy, in fact, although number nine hasn't come out yet.、Um, and what was interesting is back when it was released, yes, yeah, that g a v me.、Uh, <laughs> show my age, but back when I saw it, when it was first released, the critics actually spanned the、uh, episode by saying, This is seriously worse than The New Hope because there is no closure to it. It just ends with、uh, Luke just being in just as much trouble as he was in the beginning of the movie. So, what was the point of the movie? There's no ending to it, there's no closure to anything. And they panned the movie for exactly that reason. And then the critics came back and said, Wow, time shows just how important the Empire Strikes Back movie was. And they proclaimed it one of the best episodes in the entire series. And while looking at that and while learning from that, they come back to this movie and say, Oh, this movie is terrible. It doesn't end. It doesn't have a closure. It doesn't have blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, Wow, didn't we learn anything from Empire Strikes Back? But anyway, so I'm not really too upset about the、uh, low critic scores because I've seen it before, right? I mean, Blade Runner was another one. Blade Runner is a legendary movie, but it got terrible reviews in the very beginning when it got released. So, yeah, for all we know, this will turn out to be another one of those. Yeah, we、uh, definitely showed the critics that、uh, it was definitely different from what they said when it came out, sort of situation. Anyway,、uh, I don't know who, when I say we, who we are, but uh, uh, that's about it for this video. I just wanted to start the series off by bringing up a few subjects and、uh, talking about a few things which I found to be interesting. Uh, I think I will make the next episode、uh, about Nova just because it's probably the most prominent for me and it's probably the most concerning for me. If you all feel that that's not the best way to start, and if you have a different subject such as Joshigan, which I also found was quite concerning, but it's not as severe as Nova, and,、uh, and whether you know, we will get motorball or not, you know, I could、uh, go whichever way, but、uh, I'll see. How you would like to see、uh, the series go. But I would, for the moment, like to see if we could talk about Nova in the next discussion. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. We'll continue on and hopefully we will have sequels. If we don't have sequels, all of this is for naught anyway. But、uh, hopefully we will have sequels and、uh, hopefully the sequels won't disappoint、uh, at all, you know, because I would like to see the Battle Angel lead a storyline. Uh, in the big screen, just because it's such a unique story. I'm still worried. It's so unique that I'm worried that the audience will really find it difficult to accept. But I'm hoping that the uniqueness will eventually be something that people will、uh, applaud. Anyway, that's about it. So, yeah, please post your comments in the comment section below since this is an overall spoiler、uh, video with regards to both the comic. And the video,、uh, movies, uh, I will say for this one, yeah, please post whatever you want. I would like to hear some in depth discussions of how this will go.、Uh, I don't think we need to talk about Mars Chronicle, but、uh, if you want to talk about Last Order, because they did also show Gelda. That's another thing I want to talk about is 
Nova coming out in that scene with Gelda, but uh, that's again something for a future. But thank you very much. I'm going to keep on talking if I don't stop now. So until the next episode, happy movie watching, happy anime watching, happy comic reading, and as always, giant nice day, everyone. Yeah, and go see Elite Battle Angel again. I saw it twice. I'll probably go see it another time, at least one more time.